Hello and welcome to this service of Solomon's United Church of Christ in Punji, Pennsylvania. Good old Pennsylvania German, uh, some people call it Pennsylvania Dutch region. This is for Sunday, July 31st, the last day of the month in the year 2022. I want to let you know here that it is a service of Holy Communion. And if you wish to partake in communion, uh, feel free to pause at any place during the service uh, to prepare for something to drink and something to share as, as the bread. I'll be using grape juice and uh, the pressed, I guess it's unleavened wafers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh, give thanks to God, for God is good, whose steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of God say so, those whom God redeemed from trouble, and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert places finding no way to an inhabited town, hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to God in their trouble, and God delivered them from their distress and led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them give thanks for God's steadfast love, for God's wonderful works to humankind, for God satisfies the thirsty, and fills the hungry with good things. Let those who are wise give heed to these things and consider the steadfast love of our God. Let us pray. Eternal God, as a people raised with Christ, teach us to seek the things that are above, where Christ abides in glory. Even as our true lives remain hidden in you with Christ, grant us a glimpse of our true selves, made pure and whole in your love. Renew your spirit within us and make us fit to bear the glory of your image. Amen. Uh, words from a hymn. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. The last stanza. Let every kindred, every tribe, on this terrestrial ball, to him with majesty ascribe, and crown him Lord of all. To him with majesty ascribe, and crown him Lord of all. I love that little phrase in the last stanza, on this terrestrial ball. Uh, there's so many different names that mean the planet Earth, but that one I always remember, it catches my attention for whatever reason. In Psalm 91, God tells us, those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Would you please join me now in the prayer for transformation? Let us pray. Gracious one, you have knit us together wonderfully. You have promised your abiding presence in our lives and have guided us with love. But we turn away from you and toward the path to destruction and discord. We judge our neighbors rather than love them, and we fail to even honor ourselves as your beloved creation. Amen. The God of mercy 
bends toward all God's children with love and hope. The Holy One leads us when we wander into divergent paths and nourishes our hunger for the newness of life. In God, grace abounds freely, abundantly, and extravagantly. Amen. I have a number of affirmations of faith, in addition, of course, to the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. And in this file, I somehow didn't mark where this one comes from, but I like it very much, and I think it's fitting for today. We believe in one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We proclaim Jesus Christ, the crucified and risen one confessing him as Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we acclaim Jesus as the Lord of the church, the head over all things, the beginning of a new creation. We acknowledge that we live and work between the time of Christ's death and resurrection and the final consummation of all things which he will bring. We are a pilgrim people, always on the way towards a promised goal, on the way Christ feeds us with word and sacraments, and we have the gift of the Spirit in order that we may not lose the way. We live and work within the faith and unity of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, bearing witness to that unity which is both Christ's gift and his will. We affirm that every member of the church is engaged to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Together with all the people of God, we will serve the world for which Christ died, and we await with hope the day of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now I have two scripture lessons for you, and these two readings as the uh, opening scripture sentences for the day, are among the suggested readings for this particular Sunday on the church calendar. Uh, Selected verses, Ecclesiastes chapters 1 and 2. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. I, the teacher when king over Israel in Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun and see all is vanity and a chasing after wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me. And who knows whether they will be wise or foolish, yet they will be master for all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain, and their work is a vexation. Even at night their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. (coughs) Wow, scripture pulls no punches, does it? That sounds like a person uh, almost in depression, but at least uh, he's being honest with his feelings. Now a different reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, Tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But Jesus said to him, Friend, 
who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And Jesus said to them, take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable, the land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is for those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. Here ends the reading of the lessons for today. The message title I selected is Sound Investments or soul investments. I was so tempted to give this a different title. I was tempted to call it soil investments or soul investments. Uh, the parable of Jesus is not talking about the soil of the land, but obviously he's been growing and reaping grain from the soil of the land. But what caught my attention is that we as humankind tend to take our soil on the planet for granted. It's another one of the many things that we kind of think will be there forever. But like drinkable water, like breathable air, and so many other things, it takes our care. I read recently, and I still can't believe this. Are you ready? In one tablespoon of soil, there can be as much as 50 billion microbes. These are individual cells, and they are what makes the soil soil. Uh, the soil is quite alive in that regard. However, there's a danger. I mean, it's scary to me that there's so many microbes in the soil. I'm not sure I want to touch soil anymore. But if it weren't again for those microbes, the soil would be dead. And here's the problem. Some 24 billion tons of soil are lost every year. That works out to almost one acre per second throughout the year. Some of the soil loss is natural, like uh, uh, runoff of water, uh, the Mississippi River, the lower end of it, keeps getting tons and tons of soil from upstream. But as you know, some of that erosion is preventable. Unfortunately, not all farmers practice good agriculture with the land. And sometimes the land is overgrazed. And in different places, we know especially about the Amazon forests, uh, cutting down billions of trees, which help to hold the soil in place. And there are many other factors that are depleting the soil, such as pollution. And so it is that the Saharan desert is encroaching further southward as people chop up wood and denude the land uh, in an attempt to provide heat for cooking and so on. Uh, India, I have read recently, is also suffering. 
and the soil loses its nutrients and becomes sand or something else unusable for agriculture. But no, I'm not here to continue talking about soil investments, but rather sound investments. This farmer in the parable of Jesus, he sounds like a wise and reasonable person. He's had a bumper crop and he needs more space to store his crops. You can't leave the grain, for example, outside unless you're in a part of the world where there is a long dry season. But eventually the, the farmer has to get the grain into silos. Uh, some farmers out west that I remember from my years in Illinois have their own, but most, of course, sell grain to a business that stores grain in huge silos and then hauls the grain off, typically by rail car to wherever it is needed. I'm reminded of the story. It's, it's funny, although it's sad. This one farmer I knew in Illinois, he was very, very sharp. And I think it was the crop of corn. He had a big wagon load of corn uh, ready to take to the silo of the uh, that was in the community, a business. But you can do something which I didn't know, and that is to test the crop for how much moisture content there is in it. Because uh, there's a certain amount of moisture permitted to be in the crop. He tested his wagon load here and there and found that his crop was way under. And so he decided to hitch up a garden hose and just let some water run in there because the more it weighs with the, the moisture of the water, the better it sells. So he went inside for lunch, but he forgot about the hose. And when he came out, it was soaked. And he had to sell that whole wagon load for a very small price because it needed to be uh, dried at the, the, the business place silo. Anyway, uh, I think of what's happening in Ukraine right now, uh, especially the biggest port city, Odessa, where the, the grain bins are full. I saw at least one picture, I think, of grain piled outside. But again, that only lasts as long as there is no rain. Uh, supposedly, Russia has uh, given permission now for grain to be exported out of Ukraine. And that's a big challenge for the world because Ukraine supplies something like 42% of sunseed oil and I forget 20% of wheat and 12% uh, of another crop, I've forgotten which. So it's really been hurting to several parts of the world, such as uh, African nations. Now, back to our story itself. Yes, this man seems wise. He has these barns, but he has more grain than he can house in them. So he decides he's going to tear down the old barns and build bigger barns. And once he's done that, it's as though he won't have to do any farming anymore. He can just sit back, relax, and enjoy living off the proceeds as he sells his grain. But you notice in the parable, and of course Jesus puts it that way for us, it's all about me, me, me. That is what he's going to do to eat, drink, and be merry. 
It's not that it's wrong to eat, drink, and be merry or to relax once in a while. But this guy, while he's been a good business person as a farmer, planning for his crops, he's been looking at the wrong treasures, the treasures that are really important are the treasures we build toward heaven. Jesus points out that we are worth much more than our possessions. And while it's good to have possessions, I mean, uh, we need certain things in order to survive. So while it's good to have possessions, when it becomes our be-all and end-all and we think of nothing else, we're bound to be hurt one way or the other. Uh, Jesus picks up the passage, I think, in Ecclesiastes on purpose. Everything this man did in Jesus' parable, who is it going to go to next since his life is demanded that very night and he won't be around to enjoy it anymore? Friends, it's a lesson for us and a lot to think about, isn't it? that we want to take care of ourselves and take care of other people. But Jesus insists that what life is really about is our relationship with God, pure and simple. I know I've said this before in other ways, but that's the foundation of everything else. If we're hung up in our possessions and think that's all of life, Sooner or later, we are bound to be disappointed. <clears throat> so, make good, sound investments, as you will, but also make good soul investments. Amen. Uh, one stanza of a hymn, Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in endless praise. I invite you, as always, to think of uh, making a contribution to your church, <coughs> excuse me, or to some charity that you can trust that is reputable. And here's the words that uh, lead us into it. As we have heard in this morning's scripture lessons, Jesus said, take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. So friends, the promise of life abundantly invites us to trust God's provision and abundance of resources for all. Now let us share our gifts from the abundance given to us. And a prayer to bless our gifts. Loving God, as we demonstrate our love through the gifts that we present to you, or through other charities for you, bless them and magnify them so that all creation will benefit from your abundance and gift of life and love. Amen. Now we turn to the order for communion. If you still need to get ready, you may want to pause for a second. Uh, I've used this at least once before. This is a service from the Iona community in Scotland. Uh, Iona was the first, said to be the first mission station, if you will, uh, of the Christian church in Scotland. It was monks. I'm not sure if there were any priests involved. Uh, almost surely there, there must have been. But they thrived uh, once and then dissipated, thrived again, and that was ancient history. I think the first time was like, uh, what, the 340s AD? And then it was disbanded, but the, the buildings or remains are still there. And so some modern Christians, maybe a century ago, reclaimed this area and now have a, a prayer uh, institute uh, some go there and live as monks, uh, dedicating themselves to prayer and service. Are you ready? The table of bread and cup is ready. So come to the table, 
you who have much faith and you who would like to have more, you who have been here often and you who have not been here for a while, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Let us pray. Loving God through your kindness, we have this bread and cup to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May we know your presence in the sharing of the bread, so that we may know your touch in all bread, all matter. We celebrate the life that Jesus shared among his community through the centuries and shares with us now, made one in Christ and one with each other. We offer these gifts and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We offer you praise, O God, and hearts lifted high, for in the communion of your love, Christ comes close to us, and we come close to Christ. Therefore, with the whole realm of nature around us, with earth, sea, and sky, we sing to you, <clears throat> with the angels of light who envelop us, with all the saints before and beside us, with brothers and sisters east and west, we sing to you. We join in the song of your unending greatness. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full, are full of the majesty of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is our brother Jesus, who walks with us on the road of our world's suffering, and who is known to us in the breaking of the bread. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and having blessed it, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given to you, in relationship with God, sealed with my blood. Take this and share it. In the same way, he took the cup, and having given thanks for it, he poured it out and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is the new cup. Hear us, O Christ, and breathe your spirit upon us, and upon this bread and cup. May they become for us your body, vibrant with your life, healing, renewing, and make us whole. And as the bread and cup, which we now eat and drink, are changed into us, may we be changed again into you, bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh, loving and caring in the world. Amen. He whose table was open to all is now present in the bread. He whose word welcomed friend and stranger offers friendship through the cup. With people everywhere, we affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply than all that is wrong. Thanks be to God. Amen. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. Take and eat. The cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. Take and drink. Let us pray. Living God, in this sacrament we have shared in your eternal kingdom. May we who taste this mystery forever serve you in faith, hope, and love. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I read two stanzas of a closing hymn. 
And I want you to understand in the second stanza, the one word is often mispronounced as wind. It's actually wind. If you look at all the words in that second stanza, it's like a clock and you pull the chain on the clock uh, to make the clock work. Uh, think perhaps of a cuckoo clock. Make me a captive Lord and then I shall be free. Force me to render up my sword and I shall conquer be. I sink in life's alarms when by myself I stand. Imprison me within thine arms and strong shall be my hand. My heart is weak and poor until it master find. It has no spring of action, sure, it varies with the wind. It cannot freely move till thou hast wrought the chain and slave it with thy matchless love and deathless it shall reign. We close with this, this benediction. As we have been led by cords of human kindness, let us live connected to all creation. As we have been freed, may we pursue liberty for all. As we have known Christ's gracious love, may we embody Christ's abundant love. Amen. Take care. Stay healthy. God bless. See you next weekend. Bye.